We should be live. So uh, tonight with the bait man, uh, happy to have you. Uh, it was awesome being on your stream. Absolutely. I'm so putting now, this uh, on a favor. So we'll see uh, how this goes. We'll, uh, you know, agenda for tonight. I think uh, we'll talk a little bit what's new with the bait man. I think he's got a few things going on that uh, some fishing related, some not fishing related. Uh, then I think we'll uh, do some shopping. Uh, I'm going to pick the bait man's brain when it comes to Pickwick. Since he's a TVA guy, uh, he should know something about the Tennessee River. And he can help me do some shopping, help me uh, decide where to spend my money. And I love some shopping. For I me. just get into old fashioned, just bait talk and whatever anybody in the chat wants to talk about. <clears throat> all right. I want to, all right. Good. I can see the chat. I had the wrong, wrong button picked up there. So uh, yeah, we got some people rolling in here. We got some of our, uh, ride or dies like Sycamore and Brock and yeah. Sycamore outdoors. Great guy. He's been emailing me today. Uh, make sure it, <clears throat> if guys that don't know, I, I was diagnosed with, uh, the Rona officially the Rona. got the COVID. Um, I'm, I'm not like on my deathbed or anything. I want people to understand that, but uh, I got kind of sick, I guess, when I was, I was streaming last Saturday night. Um, I was coughing a lot, and it just kind of got um, worse. So, I, you know, if I had a fever, I couldn't go into my work. So I'm like, man, I want to work. So I just don't want to go in there and get somebody else sick, w no matter what it was. And then I got my results back this morning, and they're like, "Yep, you're positive for COVID-19." I'm like, "Oh, well, that's great." So, and I was on that stream. We were all kind of joking in the chat, like, "Oh yeah, Baxter's got the he's got the Rona, he's got the COVID," and then yeah, not funny anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, now I've had the flu several times in my life. I've had mono twice, and it kicked my butt worse than this has. The only thing I'll say. I just haven't got my energy level up to where I'm just like excited and, you know, I've napped twice today. Uh, but, you know, I don't have cold sweats. I'm not throwing up or anything like that. And I, I'm ready to talk some baits for a little while and talk some fishing on the TVA, man. You're going to yeah. come my way. What a better place to uh, quarantine than in the bait room, right? You got like a built in sanctuary. So that's right. Things that make me happy all around. So you are we're talking baits and your energy levels already up about 10% from when you first got on. So this might be the cure. This might be the cure. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, glad to have you. It's good to see you guys. Uh, I see a couple of familiar faces from my stream, a couple from your stream. So, uh, people are rolling in. That's awesome. Uh, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up as you roll in. I mean, Kevin's basically on his deathbed coming here to do the stream. So the least you can do is show some support. <laughs> Yeah, make sure you super chat Rich a lot of money too, because I'm, I'll, I'm big I'll it to the, the the Bateman COVID relief fund when we need it. No, it's going to be the tackle relief fund after I tell you all these baits you're fixing to buy. That's true. So, yeah. So for the people that are rolling in, like I said, we're gonna we're getting caught up with Kevin, and then we're about to do some uh, some shopping. I've got a couple of websites pulled up here. Um. Yeah, and. We're live on Facebook and YouTube. I uh, actually invest a little bit to the more premium service of the stream to do on multiple streams. So uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys share it. Uh, hope another place to see and watch the guests is good and it works out. I see you, Shadow, lurking. Uh, but yeah, so I'm prepping for the Bass Nation National Championship coming up on Pickwick Lake in the middle of November. And I thought, well, I need to do so. I was looking down my like checklist of things I need to do and like fix this on the boat and do this. And I was like, well, I got to buy some baits before I go down there. So I'm ready. And I was like, who better to advise me on baits than a Tennessee River guy than uh, the bait man, right? So he may not know how to catch them, but he knows what they're biting on. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what's up. Uh, and I, I got out Sunday. I dropped a video yesterday that was really good. I actually caught a bona fide jaint. I got a six pounder in Minnesota. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I always say Jane's relative, but if it starts with a six, it's automatically Jane. Yeah. <clears throat> and then the very next day, we got six inches of snow. So time to do some shopping until uh, get the boat out again. And I might not get the boat out until I drive down to Pickwick. So we'll see. Then you say your tournament's uh, basically, you say October, November 26th. 
Uh, it's like November, like 11th through the 13th. So right oh. in the of November, second. I would say the first time I ever went to Pickwick was uh, for a BFL wild card. And um, it was basically Halloween weekend. Yeah. And that was kind of before it uh, was in all its glory it is now. Um, mm -hmm. It was kind of about a year or two before it really took off. Yeah, I would and, say you could argue Pickwick's right up there in the top three for uh, Tennessee. I mean, yeah, I would have said two years ago it was probably number one. Gunnersville was down a little bit. Kentucky Lake was on the down, and Pickwick was just turning them out. I mean, for smallmouth fishing, uh, Pickwick and Wilson are one and two. One A, and actually, why I say one A and one B. Yeah. You can fish below Wilson Dam or fish, fish below Pickwick um, both ways. Um, so but, we, we can only fish Pickwick. We cannot lock. So that's okay. That won't be a bad deal. Wilson can be plenty of water. It's like anyway. 50 some boats. So it's going to fish big for sure. Oh, dude. Every turn I fished on Pickwick, it had like 200 plus boats. Yeah, for sure. No, I'm sure there's. Potentially, and it's going to be a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so we shouldn't have a lot of local tournaments, right? There might be some some little covers and things like that. Right. But I expect any like big wild cards or any big team trails while we're out there, so that's good. <clears throat> Shout out to uh, Old Bailey with Serious Angler, great guy, man. Uh, feeling better, just not a lot of energy. Um, we'll knock it out. Yeah. All right. Let's see. So let's talk a little bit about Pickwick in general. <clears throat> I'm actually going to pull up. It's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do. So Logan says you need to have Kate Laufenberg on. He had a big yeah. Room. So I've actually had him on a couple times. And uh, it's about, he's actually one of my all time. Uh, he's, he's the one that I've gotten the most live views and most uh later so i had 80 live with kate on uh, the last time i had him on this summer um so i know he was doing a facebook thing with some of the great lakes people uh so um so pickwick lake we can jump back to the Ooh, big town of iuka yeah that's not where i wanted to be Yeah. Are y'all launching out of Florence or the other? Yeah, we're, we're launching out of Florence. Can't really use this. Okay. <clears throat> Try this again. Then my map reset here. This this is a lot more high tech than my stream, Hella Bass. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm good to get a I'm good to get a giveaway. A web a picker pulled up working. You're over here triple split screening and popping up chat messages, all kinds of stuff. There we go. Now we're zooming in down here. <clears throat> all right. So, yeah, so this is Pickwick, which, right, here's the dam, right? That goes yes. and is up here. Uh, and Pickwick is down here. We're taking out of Florence, was in, which is pretty close to the top of uh, – where we can fish, right? What's probably, I don't know, a couple miles up to the Pickwick Dam from Florence. Well, actually, you're going uh, you're going toward Wilson Lake. That's what I'm saying. The Wilson, so the Wilson Dam, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the dam at the top of Pickwick, which is the Wilson Dam. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think it goes down all the way, and then it becomes the Tennessee River here, right? Yeah, and that's actually where uh, it's Tennessee River, and uh, it meets – the Pickwick Dam meets the end of the Kentucky Lake. Right. Slash so this turns into Kentucky way up here somewhere. Yes. Should be somewhere just north of Parsons. Yeah. yeah. So like this is down – people like this is kind of – people don't fish way south of here, right? They go down. Yeah, they fish there. This, this whole new Johnsonville area uh, where there, there's this big bend right here. Uh, yeah. Brett Height did all that damage several years ago. He's basically – showed the Nico rig to mm -hmm. the world uh, right there at the, the 40 bridge down there. Is Paris do fish the down there. Below New Johnsonville. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. You got the Duck River runs in there uh, somewhere. And, uh, that's actually a great smallmouth area, Duck River is. Sure. So. All right. So we're, we're one pool away from uh, your hometown, your home pond, and we're talking about Pickwick. So Pickwick, a little more narrow than uh, some of the other TVA lakes. Yes. Um, a little more riverine. Uh, probably the second most dense population for smallmouth behind Wilson, from what I gather. Um, pretty darn good ledge lake. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a really good ledge lake. It's different than I would say Gunnersville or Kentucky Lake. Is there's not as many uh, ledges. They're all pretty much community, but the schools on them. The, the, um, when you find them, it's not like ten or twenty fish. It can be fifty to hundred to two hundred fish, yeah. which is how it used to be up here. But uh, man, last year, no. Um, me and Jake Lawrence uh, scanned some fish in the summer, and there's at least two thousand bass in the school. It was unreal. Sure. Which, of course, if I ran across that now, I'd be like, God, look at all these carp, you know? But, yeah. Bayou says, is there muskies in Pickwick? Uh, chain pickerel. Chain pickerel. Yeah, those are nasty. Yeah. They, yeah. they like the rattle traps. Fearsome dynamic duo. Hello, Bass and Bait, man. Sean. Uh, Sean's a good guy, man. We got Justin Royal in the house. What's up, Justin? Justin Royal in the house. Good dude, man. Maybe he'll chime in if, we're, if we start looking at hard baits. Maybe he'll have some advice. For sure. All right. Kept, he, dude, I'm just going to be honest. You know, we're talking baits. He's been hammering them on a crawdad color crankbait for like two weeks now. Like a lipless so, or like a diving or? 50X, six cents. He calls it the oh. Cheeto or Cheetah. So that's but a square bill? 50X, right? Square bill. And I got thinking, man. I've never been big on red or oranges in the fall. And then I'm, you know, the bait man thing's turning in me, and I'm thinking, you know what? He's probably on to something. He's fishing. The lake he's fishing, I don't know what the name of it is, but lots of rock and all that. And I'm thinking, you know, it's really not a bad idea because, uh, well, there's all this rock. Obviously, there's going to be lots of crayfish around and stuff right. like that. So, uh, and it's probably just giving them something different they're not seeing to really seem to be reacting on that red and orange. So, um, Something in my playbook I might have to start adding a little bit. It's not getting bites on the shack coach. Maybe throw something a little orange or red like I would in the spring. But yeah, I water, think it's clear too. So when you go down south, you think shad in the fall, right? So everybody just picks up their shad baits and yep. <clears throat> Ooh, somebody just had to winterize their boat yesterday. It's no bueno. Uh Chester Cheeto. Nice. That's what he calls it, yeah. And, and that's it. That's his original name for it. So, I'm, uh, we all, I like original names, you know, like Jank, and I think yeah. you've got some originals too. Hella Bass is pretty, pretty original. You've trademarked that very well. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, yeah, we're at Pickwick. Uh, like, so I was, I went, the first thing I was on to Omnia Fishing, and I was going to see if there's no fishing reports. That will change. When I go down there, I will file some fishing reports. So if you want <laughs> for uh, uh, Pickwick, um, it does highlight buzz baits, chatter baits, swim baits as fall techniques. Swim baits is immediately kind of one of the places where my head went for sure. Yeah. Um, I'll I tell you what's going to be up your alley, Rich. The swim jig. Spring on Gunnersville throwing throwing some swim bait so i'm not afraid to go down there uh and whip around a paddle tail catching bass right now in wisconsin tips uh oof, with this cold front we had it gets so if we're talking largemouth this is where it starts to get tricky because i'm guessing most of wisconsin water temps have now approached the really low 50s the high 40s and uh, without shad in most of our lakes, so the river is different because it has shad, but in most of our lakes, we don't have shad. Um, my first piece of advice would be go to a smallie lake, Logan. Uh, if you can go to a lake that's got smallies, your chances of catching go up significantly. They're way more active in this cold water. And uh, <clears throat> But if you got to go largemouth, I'd say downsize finesse jigs, fish them super slow. 
Uh, try some jerk baits. Um, those would be the two things that I would really start to key on. Uh, crawl stuff on the bottom. Try some flat side crank baits. But as that water temp dips into the 50s, uh, to me, a finesse jig is really hard to beat uh, around whatever remaining green grass you can find. I'm listening. I'm trying to make sure we get your views up, buddy. That's awesome. Go. Yeah. I'm letting, letting them know. Make sure you smash the like. Absolutely. I'm smashing it right here on my phone. We only got we only got nine likes. We got to get at least at least a hundred for Rich. So Kyle says, "How you feeling?" Uh, low energy. Low energy, but he's hanging in there. <laughs> That's what Don Don would call me. Low energy bait man right now. Nice. Yeah, I got a real hat on because it's only 43 to garage, 43 degrees in the in bait garage, in the boat garage. So um that's yeah. why Ron tells me Bateman just said swim jigs would be a good option for Pickwick in November. Man, you'd be surprised how many guys catch them on a swim jig on the Tennessee River in October, November. Um it, it used to kind of be a little secret deal when it got tough and uh, guys have really picked it up the last couple of years. I had a swim jig hanging there in my lid. Especially since there's some ill grass in Pickwick, which you love to fish. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Mississippi River, swim jigs, eel grass, all that stuff is right in my comfort zone. Good Lord. Marty Burns is all backed up. <laughs> that guy makes amazing baits, man. It's what happens when you're a good bait builder. You pretty much stay backed up. Okay. <laughs> uh, my feet. What's your favorite jerk bait? Uh, so why don't you go first? What's your favorite jerk bait? Man, it, at the end of the day, um, a Mega Bass Vision 110 is, is the gold standard. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? That's what everybody tries to build a jerk bait. They want the action like. Um, I throw the six cents provoke. It's a really good one. Uh, but a sneaky good one, man. Uh, if you can find them, Lucky Craft Slender Pointer 112. I know some guys like the 127. It's really good. I like the 112, just a little that mid size. Uh, but, you know, dude, I got a ton of mega bass. I, the colder the water, the more faith I have in the mega bass. You know, when it's, uh, you know, in the low 60s, dude, a Lucky Craft, uh, a Spro's a good one. A uh, freaking suspend, Smithwick suspended rogue crushes them on Pickwick. That might be the best rogue a lake in the country i'd say half my jerk bait box is 110s <laughs> yeah um a few wraps, a bunch today actually a few lucky uh, crafts few strike kings few emas mostly uh, and then like but then even though half of them 90 percent of the time when i go in there what i pick is a 110 right i mean uh I look at it like this: if you don't want, if you, you don't mind paying twenty to twenty five dollars for jerk bait, uh, Mega Bass is, is going to be that's the one you're going to grab most of the time. Um, if you want to pay twelve to eighteen dollars, uh, you know, Lucky Craft OSP is a really really good one. Um, sure. Not many people know about that. Um, if you if you want to be under that twelve to six, you know, six dollar mark. I think six cents is the top of their category in that. And then dude, yo, Zuri's uh jerk baits are really good. And uh, you hit on the I'm a flip. Mm -hmm. I'm a flip's a great bait and it's a no name bait. A lot of people don't realize it. It's out there and it catches them. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. Absolutely. Uh oh, a ten dollar holla for Hella Bass. Sean is the man. Yeah, Tom's good. Yeah, the RC sticks are pretty good. They are definitely yes. It's a very great. Uh, a lot of people ask me. Uh, I'm feeling some energy right now, Rich. Just to let you know, um, <laughs> a lot of people ask me say, "What's a great cheap jerk bait?" Uh, RC sticks are really yep. good for price, especially if you're just working them fast. Yes. You don't. 
suspend. You're just kind of when you're just jerking it <laughs> uh, and, and just ripping it. I think the the, the RC uh, performs right there with it. <clears throat> when you got to be subtle and let it pause and, and dance it a little more, then the the 110 tends to shine. I think. Someone just mentioned this jerk bait. Um, I'd like to find some more. They made a table rock color, and I haven't haven't found one. This one right here. This is the old Pradco. Let's see if you guys can see it. That's the EE Excalibur. That's a good one. It's got a definite unique sound to it. If you've ever noticed, it's got some rattle. But yeah. I, li I like that one. That that's a pickwick kind of color there, man. They like that Norman Flake stuff like that. It's, there we go. All right, let's get back to the lake. Yeah, we'll be on baits all night. We'll talk baits at the end. How's that? Uh, Keep me alive. All right. So where, where where should we start? You think we should start with swim baits? Or you start with hard baits? Where, where you're the expert? Yeah, let's, let's see what you got up on Omni on the swim baits. They don't have the biggest selection, but we can change sites. That's for sure. So they've got some X Zone, and they got uh, some Z Man. Um, but we can bop over to another option here. We go wherever you want to. We go someplace that has a slightly larger selection. Uh, you may be familiar with this site. Yeah, I was on there today actually for shocker. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, on there today for about two hundred dollars worth. Swim baits. So we're thinking paddle tails. Yeah, man, I'd go. That's the thing about these TVA lakes. Uh, you don't have to get real crazy. You know, I, I've obviously I throw crazy stuff, but the, that one right there by your mouse, Scottsboro tackle sw swim bait. That's kind of the standard around here. Uh, that style mold. Um, uh -huh. you, very, I, I just like natural colors, man. There's one I've never thrown is that California smelt. That's got to be a tackle warehouse color. Um, but uh, let's see, uh, nat, nat, natural light, um, uh, Mullins Madness, and Old Smoky. Those are the, the Tennessee River colors. That sure. man, look, look at these guys, they've won so much money this year. They're, They're all that gum about at all, except for. <laughs> I, uh, I will tell you, payback shad's really good. Um, that's kind of like a chartreuse and blue. Do I, I think I have one out of the like a sexy shad almost, kind of. Yeah, but man, at Pickwick, they like those brightish colors. Um, I'll tell what you, uh, would you be throwing in a tournament? So, fifteen inch. Yeah, I'll tell guys all the time, if you don't know, um, the five inch on Scottsboro is super versatile. Um, I've thrown them with a beast hook, like a six op beast hook. I've thrown them on three quarter ounce jig heads. Uh, five inch swims good. Um, the six is a little bit bigger. I, oh, I've got some right here next to me. This is the one. You have a five inch? Uh, yeah, actually, here's a five and a six next to each other holy cow they're two in the same box so this is the natural this is the natural light color very okay. gizzard the six or the five? so this is the six and then here's the five right under it so you, you, there is a big difference in the size by the way but this five it's not gaudy uh i would say that match the size of five a inch scottsboro looks about like the six inch Bastrix. <laughs> the five inch, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I've always heard, you know, I know Bruce at Bastrix for a long time. And he'd always talk about the five inch Bastrix and then ship them in their six inch label. So I, I don't know. But, uh, right. <clears throat> and then his seven inch was like eight inches. So, but yeah, that's, that's basically the equivalent of the Bastrix six inch is a Scottsboro five. Um, and dude, if you got any old bass tricks, they freaking eat those suckers on pickwood too. Um, but the five inch man, you can 
I like it on just a half ounce head because it's not real, real heavy. Um, but uh, man, it, it swims yeah. good. It's, it's a proven bait there on Pickwick. I don't have to say a whole lot about that, you know. We happen to have a pack of six inch shad asterisks right here. They're, you know, they'll eat those suckers down there. Um, just depends if you're going to get into a lot of grass, you know, you may have to go with a uh, rigging on a beast hook or something like that. But right. Um, I also have the true bass, true basses, true bass in both the five and the six. Yep. See that, that old chartreuse color there is always is pretty good yeah, the there. Top bass. Mm -hmm. My buddy Brent Anderson would say throw those. Yeah. Totally different action. You know, uh, that, that bait's got a lot more roll to it. Mm -hmm. uh, Scottsboro is going to have more of a, the tail's gonna go backwards, uh, back and forth, and got head wobble. Uh, whereas that one's, the bait's actually gonna roll and have a little bit of flop to it. Bass still love both of them. You know, I'm, I'm, it's uh, it's kind of like spinner baits. You know, one day they want uh, they want a spinner bait that's got a lot of flash. The next day they want one that's you know doesn't have as much flash and seems to pulse more. So, um, so I tell people all the time, swim baits is kind of like uh, crank baits. I mean. Everyone's got its day and time. You just got yeah. to figure it out. Uh, yes, someone did buy Bass Tricks. Matter of fact, uh, I got an email from um, uh, Bruce Porter Bass Tricks, and told me, he told me the guys that bought it. So it's going to be – should be selling baits again probably the first of the year. Very excited about it. Nice. <clears throat> Sometimes smaller better, sometimes bigger is better. I think uh, it changes. Um, <clears throat> so let's see what other heads do we got here. So let's uh, anything else. So we talked about the uh, the Scottsboro. We talked about the Bass Tricks. We talked about the True Bass. I don't know if there's really a need to get. I mean, I think those three. Has yeah, and it, man, I'll be honest with you, Rich. I would have some Kytec three threes or, or oh, something, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Sure. Um, and get you some screw lock heads, you know, in the quarter. Scottsboro makes an awesome uh, head owner, ball head. Just Yeah, I got a bunch of Kytex somewhere. We're good there. We're, yeah, we're I figured you got, got all kinds of Kytex. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm so getting low. Talk man. About, before we leave swim baits, let's talk about swim bait heads. Okay. Um, okay. I have to look and see what they got. Um, what would they do? Nice be? head box. If it's not going to be a pain in the butt for me. Section. Let me go back. Uh, personally, I throw a revenge head quite a bit, but okay. Uh, the True Bass True Lock head, if it's on there, it's pretty good. It Very is. Good. Or the Scottsboro uh, head for their baits. Uh, you can find these on there. The Revenge is right here. The heads, or the Swimbait Heads XL. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I used to use those XL, and uh, they're good. But uh, I was hooking a lot of fish outside of the mouth. Hmm. So, but on a, on a five-inch Scottsboro, this isn't really a Revenge head. It's it's a copy of one, not gonna lie. But yeah. It's got a lot of our hook. A buddy of mine makes these. We don't sell them. But that side hook, size hook's good enough for the five inch STC. Matter of fact, I think I think this is a regular revenge right here. I can't I think this is a non XL revenge. It might be an yeah. XL, but that'll work. Um, but what I was trying to find, I've got one down in here. Should I have a screw lock head somewhere? Maybe I don't. <clears throat> <laughs> I don't. Um, but that True Bass, True Lock hooks, uh, really good in the Scottsboro. They make their own screw lock swim bait hook. I like, you know, for the five inch, that five off. I just had a crazy big hook. And uh, I think that's what uh, 
one thing I think people do, they try to overcompensate for the bait. They go, oh, I got a six inch swim bait. I got to have a tuna hook in it. Right. In reality, a lot of those fish are actually eating it head first. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, that's why I kind of got away from those Revenge XL hooks because I was hooking them up outside the mouth. I mean, I'm still catching a few, but I was jumping them off. I'm like, man, what's happening? And got to talking to Matt Allen and a few other guys. And like Clint Davis was the big guy. Told me, he said, man, your hook's way too big. Like yeah, they're so trying to then, and they can't eat the whole bait. But they're right. So what's bait. happening is they're coming from the side, right, on a bigger yeah. bait, right, and they're coming head first. And that hook sticking out so much, you're rolling that hook over. And yes. You're, and you're catching them on the outside versus right. smaller hook. They come and they just get the whole thing, and then you pull it like this, and then you got them, right? So absolutely. Yeah. She explained things so much better than me. That's, that's why you're my moderator. <laughs> That's why we're a good team. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I've had good luck with uh, a few swim bait heads. I'm definitely going to try some of those true bass because they've got that, that really solid keeper with that screw lock. I like the looks of this revenge head. Yeah. Um, revenge, revenge have always been solid hooks. They're, and I still use them on certain swim baits. I, I started out throwing those uh, on bass tricks. I think they, you know, you got to glue them on a bass tricks, but yeah. uh, man, um, especially on the seven inch, they work really good on the small six inch. Uh, uh, I still use them, but I just don't use the XL. Um, you know, for Kitex and stuff, that Scottsboro Hellfire is really, really good. And of course, I like just the regular old plain owner one, but yeah. Yeah, the true bass is nothing fancy. No, but it works, man. It but works. It, yeah the solid solid hooks uh the screw works i've actually last time was the other one that i've was pretty impressed with actually um for being a simple design was the the dobbins actually yeah. it's yeah. hard to see it in this picture actually you can see the two different versions right they have mm -hmm. a double keel barb in two directions so one goes horizontal one goes vertical and i felt in the true bass head, especially that one held pretty well. Like I didn't need much for glue or anything. I, I mean, I'd swim bait held a long time without glue on these heads. Um, yeah, I've got, I had some of those Dobbins heads and, um, I think I got them. I forgot how I got them. Maybe they sent them to me as a sample one time. I really liked them. Yeah. Um, I think uh, someone says that, big fan of this topic of discussion this is really a whole you can make a whole video on swim baits and, and pairing with heads and stuff again uh, it's like spinnerbait blades there's so many different blades and combinations uh that do a lot of different things to a spinnerbait same with the heads you can make a one swim bait bait fish three different ways just by changing the heads or how you rig it you know Oh, added to cart. Look at him go. Wish list. So we're, we're building it. For those who don't know, like this is, right, you can build different wish lists. <laughs> so I've got like my old Gunnersville list. I got my general fish and stuff. I've got my Pickwick list. Uh, so we'll, no, I don't think I added any revenge though. Let's, we'll put those in there. Uh, uh, Dirty Jigs, Matt Allen head's pretty good too, man. Yep. I feel like it's better on like a Bastrix or a Kitek or, or something that's solid. And, um, and they got that finesse one. Um, you know, Six Cents makes a good head. It's not the best for bigger, bulky body swim baits, but really good for uh, Kitex. And uh, the first time I used it was actually on the Jackal Rhythm Wave. Now, that's a really good swim bait no one talks about. Sure. It's a rhythm so wave. If you just show up, You'd say a half ounce to start with? Yes. If there's any current, though, you're going to need some three-quarter. Um, yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm one of those guys. I'll throw these hollow bellies and stuff on a little bit lighter line than most guys do. It can break your heart, but I feel like I get a few more bites. And so instead of throwing 20 pounds, a lot of guys automatically – I might start with uh, 15. And if I feel like I'm getting broke off, I'm going on 17. But um, – I try to get away with half, but you're going to need some three quarters. See, to me, 
Zoom it ahead. You just go with this this gray silver. You don't get caught oh, up. Yeah. These zillion colors. You just drive yourself nuts trying to match them. So you just find yourself a, a silver or a gray. <laughs> yeah, I used to do the whole matching thing. And once I started catching just as many on pearl white and these unfinished heads, I just I just seem to have silver. You know what? You, you'd be like Epic Eric. You just take around some nail polish. And if you need a, a white one, you paint it white and put some red eyes on it. You can do that. Or June bug, whatever. Sure. All right. So we've kind of covered swim mates. I think we that was already in my head. Um, so I'm thinking swim baits, hard baits. Yeah. Uh, probably going to need some kind of uh, mid death crank uh, and some flat sides. Uh, so what? If you had to guess, what do you think the water temp will be middle of November on Pickwick? Mid to low 50s. Okay. So it should be like. Unless, I mean, it's going to be 82 degrees here tomorrow. I'm two hours from Pickwick. It's going to warm. And I mean, our like, temperature in Kentucky like is low to mid 60s. So. But we should be on the cusp of them really starting to feed. Yeah. Like the bite being good, right? Like we should be getting out of this crappy fall transition the elite series has been <laughs> going through and that we should be turning the corner to where they're starting to eat i think mm -hmm. um you got this going for you too uh deer season gun season is going to be in nice so a lot of your locals will be sitting in tree stand yeah. So the last time they had the national championship on Pickwick, same time of year, within a few days, back in 2017, I think it that's when Randy Pearson won to make the elites. And I want to say he had 59 pounds for three days. So that's what, about uh, 59 pounds for three days, almost a 20-pound average. Yeah, so he had like – I just – 24 pounds then 21 pounds and then like 14 pounds or something like that <clears throat> oh uh, good question here from sean law he says Batman, do you know the difference between the canine fluorocarbon and 100 percent uh the regular canine is a copoly it's not a true floral which for cranking i like that copoly sure. a lot. almost like the old floral clear yes yeah. <clears throat> from good uh, one man and guy that owns that's He's a good pick with Trishman. He's from uh, Nashville, so. Nice. So let's say we're saying uh, crankbaits, mid-range crankbaits. So we got to remember to actually share the screen that I'm looking at. <laughs> and uh, let's see. You need a Strike King. Um, Anything, it's it, the color is called sexy green shad. So, you think I should just go shop by brand, go to Strike King? See, well, I'd go by color. I'll show you the color. I'll see if I got the bait right up here. This is the Pickwick color, buddy. I don't know if they even got it on TW. You may have to find this one on Land Big Fish or somewhere. All right, we're going full screen on the bait, man. See this color. Matter of fact, this bait is really good on pick. This is the KVD uh, 1.5, um, 1.5 D, 1.5 flat, not the 1.5 DD. This is the 1.5 flat. This bait's been sure. out several years. That color's uh, sexy green shad. Sexy green shad. Dude, they TVA guys, I tell you, those guys on pick, they love this color. But 5XD, anything you can find in that. Um, Here's the one. We'll see. We'll look at the 1.5 flat. Yep. Except Apple shad's a good one. I'm not just. There it is. That's that's the one right there. Look at that right there. Look at that. I'm you proud of you. That word. Word. That's a very underrated bait from Strike King. There's a lot of baits that get a lot of love. And that one just flat catches fish in that eight to ten foot range. You know, a lot of it's kind of like a spro little John DD. You know, um, it's got a real good top wobble to it. It it casts okay. Um, <clears throat> it catches though. Nice. 
um, you know, mid range, obviously, um, you know, something like a fat free, the smaller fat free sheds, pretty good. I guess that's the BDF four, uh, you know, something like a six cents C10. It doesn't go, you know, that eight to 10 foot range or Norman deep little ends. Um, Six cents. Slow down. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, what? A medium. Cloud nine. And, uh... Yeah, there's. It says Cloud Nine series, um, and they make one. It's a C a C ten. That's the that's the one. All right. So C six C ten. So my C10 is going to be that same <clears throat> eight foot. Yeah, eight to twelve. You know. So what's the magic color for the the C10? Anything that's you know right now Tennessee River, uh, it's going to be a shad shad color. Um, that's a pretty good one, bud. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> There's some color in the water, they'll bite that sucker. Um, the one that's always been good, uh, that lavender citrus, that's mm -hmm. those guys, like I said, they flake pickwick guys, they like that old school, you know, almost Norman kind of color. And shad scales, anything like that, it's gonna be hard to beat. Cause man, Pickwick is uh full, full of bait, man. Yeah. It's crazy. And obviously you can go modify it however you want to at a later date. Um, I think from what you've shown me in your square bill, um, I'm probably good. Like, I mean, I've got, yeah, you're my, probably good. My sixes were covered DT six. I mean, that's probably a decent bet. And I feel like my square bills, Let's just take a look at what we got in the old square bill box here. Let's yeah, just... you, you, it's time for you to bust some baits out, bud. <laughs> I'm not doing. It, I'm looking at Tackle Warehouse. Everybody's hi, everybody that I haven't said hi to in the chat. Um, yeah, I don't, so I definitely like I. Even if there was like a deep cranking bite, I wouldn't be too excited. That's not my game. Like I'm not gonna go there and and go. Right. Take, don't don't. Oh, Don't man, stick against your line. drinks, man. Yeah. That's why I was suggesting that mid depth because you know it, there's a lot of secondary points and, and stuff that you can fish. I mean, I've got some some little crushes. Yeah, I've got some flat seventy fives. Yeah, juice and citrus. Listen, man, Tennessee River. I don't care what time of year it is. You can throw a chartreuse blue, chartreuse purple, anything, and you catch a few fish. It's just all these any good? Yeah, those are really good, Rich. They just wanted to say Rick Clown on the back. Are those supposed to be any good? Yeah, they were supposed to say Mike Otten, but yeah, those are really good. <laughs> so I got a couple of those. Um, what else have we got in here? We got some KVDs, 1.5s, 2.5s, some EMA. Square bills. So if they're getting shallow on the bait, I like this is one of my favorite like shallow square bills. Like if they're getting up doing that mm -hmm. flat, might be a little early for that. But when they like be little push shallow bait, I like that one. Um, got some Ema shakers. I'm a sh Ooh, that's a good one, man. I, I don't think they're making that anymore, are they? I'm not sure. It's caught with about 17 other baits, but. Kind of a chrome one. I think you're going to be good on the square bill deal. Square bills can be good. We should see how much it ends up being hard current break stuff versus a grass bite, I guess. I think that's a lot of that's going to depend on how you want to fish. Sure. I mean, last time I was at Pickwick, you know, the first time I was ever there, I literally was, I, I actually put in the Tennessee Tom Bigby. So. Way at the uh, bottom, right? Yep. Yep. Pretty much. And Tom Bigby runs in the back of Yellow Creek. Um, I'm going out of Yellow. I'm going out of Tom Bigby, and drive by the first red buoy I see on my left. Two gizzard shad fly out of the water. 
and I look back and all of a sudden a big bull. I'm like, so I turn around, I come back there and I threw a big spinner bait out because that's all I had tied on. Sure. Make about nine cranks and catch a five pound smallmouth. So, okay. Then I tie a worm on and catch about a five pound large mouth and never fish it till um, the tournament. And the first day I broke down, the second day I went back and caught about 18 pounds off that. Nice. But I'm, what I'm saying is it, it, it's that's typical Tennessee River, you know. Right. You find the bait, whether it's in a foot of water or 30 foot of water, uh, that, that's, that's how you're going to catch them. Um, but there's yeah, a lot of it that live really shallow there, too. So what, do you, what are your thoughts on the OSP Blitz that Sean's asking about? Well, this is good bait, man. Is that um, like an 8 to 10 type footer as well? or? Yeah, it's more of a finesse bait. Um, the what you would want is really the blitz you know dr um they there's i got some right here there's Docker. they kind of confuse you because like the blitz max is a smaller bait than the regular blitz all right so like yeah like the blitz mr so this is the blitz mr right here this is a and they make a blitz dr but you can see it's kind of it don't have a real big body you know it's like a 1.5 body size right. and it's got that that bill um then more goes about eh, six eight feet something like that uh -huh. <clears throat> they're freaking nice baits though but yeah blitz dr is going to have a uh or the blitz max max maximum size body uh, obviously, it's going to have a bigger profile. But, uh, yeah. OSP, good stuff, man. I wish I had more of it. I'm going to adjust a lot here. Nice. So, Ryan's asking about the new Rick Clun square bill. I don't know if he's talking about. Uh, front page yeah, that thing. It looks like a. Is that not look like a Z Boss? I suppose. It's got that Z Boss style body. It's a eight to ten footer. It's called the King Kong Shad from Ichikawa. Yeah, I don't know much about it. You got any have you heard I saw it on there today and I was like, I don't know about it. That's like the old copper shad right there, is almost, isn't it? Like you know that the, the thing is, they've tried to make some of the old Rick Klon colors, and some of them look good, and some of them are. I'm like, man, it's they look more like Norman colors. Yeah, for sure. Like that carnival reminds me of an old Norman color, but eight to ten foot diving square bill. I mean, Lucky Craft's done it. Uh, Strike King's got the eight point oh, really good bait. Six Sense has got that big square magnum so right I'll, I'll i'll be honest i think the strike king 4.0 is one of the best if not their best square bill okay it's really really good and i love that mini mag too but so this this swank is this what is this similar to the hybrid hunter yes this that's basically their hybrid hunter or and they're in stock on the Six Sense website. They just went up, back up in stock today. New colors too. So, what, what do you think of this kind of bait in the fall? Is this a what time of year? You know, you I'd love to tell you, Rich, go buy two dozen of them. I don't even have one. I'm not real familiar with that bait because I don't. We haven't had grass in so long here on Kentucky Lake. Some guys swear by that L Bill style. Uh -huh. uh, I'd love to say yes. Uh, it's definitely worth taking and playing with. Don't buy this bait. It only catches keepers. Well, that's the best review I've ever seen. I would buy 10 just based on that. <laughs> you know, some of these reviews are really helpful. And then sometimes I'm like, there's no way that guy actually fished that bait, whether it was good or bad. <laughs> nice. All right. I don't know. Hey, Rich, my wife says, please come in here. I'll be right back. I'm sorry. I've got an emergency here. Uh-oh. Well, what did Bateman do? 
It's probably go fix the TV. All right. What's up? Gabe, he says, make sure you take some dirty Sanchez beavers and some gambler burner cross and back at you and killer G for punching. I got no shortage of Beezer beavers and spicy beavers and D bombs and all that jazz. So uh, if it's a grass slipping bite, I'm set. I'll be right at home. Um, five live fishing. Will I be able to watch this later? Absolutely. So as soon as this is over the replay and then like the official republished replay will come out tomorrow mid morning. It usually takes about 12 hours for these things to go back up on YouTube. So absolutely the YouTube replay will be there. Uh, so just make sure you hit that subscribe button five alive and you won't miss it. Uh, dirty water bait. Uh, I've heard of the Orion crank. Don't know much about it. Logan says, how do you pick which crank we to throw out of the thousands you guys have? Uh, it's mainly depth and action, right? So depth first and then action second, Logan. So uh, if I'm fishing less than five feet, I'm probably picking a square bill. And then um, depending on the time of year, if it's cold water, spring or fall, I want something with a little more flat sided, a little subtler. In the summer, I want something more round with a, a harder thump and then color, right? So am I imitating bluegills, crawdad, shad? What's the water color? What do I try to imitate? So the same thing happens if I want to get out and fish edge of the grass line. I still have to look at a DT6 or a DT10. Am I trying to be natural, you know, with the cloud cover, the light, you know, make a decision that way. So it's kind of a progression uh, on how to pick a crankbait. Uh, let's see what other comments we missed. Uh, Yeah, so I think we're kind of caught up. Arsenal punch rigs for punching. Will this be the latest in the calendar you've ever fished a tournament? Um, pretty close. I know I fished the Bassmasters Weekend Series Championship in late October, early November on Clark's Hill once. So that would be similar. But yeah, probably. Yeah, I definitely we need to talk about some spinner baits. Um, yes, I do need the blade for sure, Sycamore. Uh, do I prefer ghost colors or matte colors in clear water? That's a good question. Um, I kind of like, I don't have a lot of the matte, but I do tend to favor the, I guess, like the faded patterns, right? A lot of these, uh, right, like the Caribbean shad. Or something like, like, you know, like those ike colors that have that real faded, muted. I mean, they're not necessarily matted, but they're they're not super bright. They're kind of faded. So uh, I seem to do better than that in the clear water of Minnesota. Um, for largies, for smallies, go bright. <laughs> um, All right, I'm back. Kid problems. And, Ever done the monster with smallies? Yep, I've got videos up if you want to go watch them, Landon. Just go back and search. We may talk spinner baits. Um, yeah. So we talked about crank baits. We talked about square bills. We could talk about jerk baits, but we kind of already talked about that. I've got a bunch of mega bass, so I'm good there. <laughs> oh, uh, might want to bring you some soft jerk baits. Okay. Flukes. Two reasons. Uh, you probably want that for a follow up. Uh, for some top water action and two sometimes they just get on that uh, That soft dirt bank there especially over the top of the grass when the water's clear sure So do I need anything besides a pearl fluke or Pearl glimmer blue um, Very interesting comment there from Maddie um, I personally don't but... <laughs> Can't say that we do but that's interesting Interesting question. Uh, that must be a friend of yours. I don't know Maddie. I don't know Maddie either. <laughs> that that will I will say that is the best one I've got in 2020. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, we can talk to spinner baits. Um, I feel like spinner bait don't get a lot of love anymore. So. One of the ones I've kind of had my eye on. Um, is been getting a little bit of a little bit of talk. 
is the the bass man the bass, the bass man method. yeah i've never thrown one i need to, i need to order order one well mm -hmm. that bass man spinner baits on there yeah i, I clicked the wrong i, I misclicked oh. everybody relax everybody relax <clears throat> So we got Colorado Willow, and we've got Double Willow. <clears throat> I'm kind of thinking Double Willow. Double Willow. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even in the fall on this on, on Tennessee River. I'll mess with nothing but Double Willow. One, if I want to slow roll it, uh, it, it stays down there a lot easier. Two, if I want to burn it, you can burn them a lot quicker. Right. So half ounce, three quarter, some of each. I have a couple half and a couple three quarter. I wouldn't throw anything less than a half unless you want to fish really shallow. And what's one thing I like about a half, I can fish from basically 12 foot to three foot, you know, right. speed it up when I'm fishing shallow. And the three quarter are kind of like if you need to slow roll it or if you if, if they really start to blow current, you know, that's a nice option. Right. And sometimes, man, they'll, they'll get in that. You know, you'll, you'll start catching fish maybe off secondary points, and it seems like they're hitting it at the deepest part, and that's when that three-quarter really helps you just keep it down there the whole cast. I really like this pearl white, a little bit of blue. Yep. It actually reminds me of the old uh, Hildebrandt, the blade bluegill color. Yep. Um, that blue glimmerish color has always been really good um, around here. Um, and down at Pickwick, I... The few times I fish in the fall, I've always had good good luck on that blue glimmer. It's it's kind of like that fluke, you know. You look at it one way, it's white, but then it turns. It's got that blue hue. That's mm -hmm. always really good. Uh, of course, uh, war eagles a good spinner bait. Uh, th those screaming eagles for burning. Um, yeah, I had my eye on some of those as well. Um, I also suggest. If you want to burn a, a, a spinnerbait with like a one ounce with a small profile, uh, the spot sticker, they're a little bit higher end, but um, let's see if I got one right here. Let's see if I got one around. Ah. Wrong button. Uh, Menendez would, Mark Menendez would tell you he would be burning a blade at Pickwick. Uh, that's always Mark's answer. I know. Like, <laughs> middle of summer, hey, Mark, we're filming a TV show. We think we should, well, you know, I think they might eat a burning blade. And I'm like, really? Okay. It's Water Temps 91. Sounds right. <laughs> always, my answer is, hey, dude, you qualify for the Bassmaster Classic, not me. But that's a really, really good little spinner bait right there, Rich. Um, the R band, but it's, it's got a. I think got a short arm, but if you see all sure. the weight is right there on the shanker hook, handmade right there in Georgia. It's got a small profile, and you can fish this really fast, or you can, and it stays down, which is the key. Um, sometimes guys want to burn up the top of the mark hole, and that's fine, but you can fish this fast in, in deeper water. So that's a spot sticker. That's, you know, I suggest that. and. I've so, always been a big fan of the accent spinner baits too. One of the things I've heard, and I'll, I mean, what's your opinion? I've heard people say the war eagles break really easy. They do. But man, I've caught some big fish on them suckers. Uh, they make a, a blue shad and purple shad. That's my favorites. Blue herring, blue pearl shad. Oh, there's blue shad right there. I like for bright sunny days. I want the I want either double nickel or my nickel on the inside, which on the spinnerbait, believe it or not, is the inside blade is the actually the one on the out. But um, and if it's overcast at all, I've got to have double gold, or I've got to have a gold. The biggest blade be gold. That's just how I've always done it. But sure, do they have spot sticker on the? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Did 
Dude, he makes a lot of really good stim, but that mini me. Look, there it is. There's the one. See, that's anything that blue glimmer. Some of them are painted blades, some of them are not. Um, you just take your pick. That's most of the wish list. Well, here's the good thing. What you order and don't use when you're way back home, you can drop, stop by my house and just drop it off to me. And Anything I don't use? That yeah. Said. yeah. Sean, that's the uh, spot stickers, the uh, name brand of that spinner bait. Oh, look at all these trebles. You're hiding them, them things from me. These have been in there already. Those are planning ahead, uh, changing out treble. I see, I see stuff on back order. Could be a problem. I know. So, Spro come out with some new utility boxes. Have you seen those? A totally different subject, but they look really good. <laughs> Let's let's take a look at them. Yeah, let's just hey, we gotta find stuff for guys store these new baits in. So, bro, tackle boxes. I feel like the fishing industry is fixing to be in the storage storage wars. Ooh, which one do you want to look at? I was going to order the just the regular thirty seven hundred, the waterproof tackle tray. It looks good. What's okay, this one. my hands cramping up from scrolling on the mouse? Looks pretty good. Kind of got that flambeau like locks on it, but maybe a little sure. bit more heavier duty. Kind of like the um, the Calco box has that style latch. It's got the the seal on it. Eleven bucks. Looks. I like the color, smoky gray. Sure. And the green didn't have didn't say Guggen on it, so that's a lot cooler. I have a bunch of these like old Plano double deckers. Uh, yes, I've got one here. I think you've seen this. I've got a couple of them. I'm filling it up tomorrow. I can't decide if I'm going to put a bunch of uh, my JDM stuff in here, or I'm gonna, I think I'm put all my bosses stuff in here. So I have one that is kind of like my top water box. So I like up top will have a lot of like hard to tip a box, but like yeah, I like poppers and small locking baits, and then down you have like the bigger compartments. Um, all right, that's where we got you know vixens. Yeah, take that box to pick with. <laughs> What's that? You gotta take them vixens to pick with. Oh yeah, the vixens are coming with. Um, have you seen this one? The U.S. Irony? The what? The U.S. Irony? No. I want to think Eric had that out like two weeks ago. Oh, yeah. I think you've talked about this one before. The Trerero? Yep. Sounds like an aerosol, like a rust can. Yeah. Compare that to like old school Vixen, right? Here's the Vixen. And here's this. So this is even like a deeper, louder thud than the Vixen. You know what's really weird about those though? When you put those baits in water, have you noticed the sound changes even more when you're working them on the water? I don't know if that's the reverb of the noise coming off the water or what? Yeah. Got a paycheck in here. Repo. Ooh. Yeah. With the Sammy hanging off the side. Yeah, you've got the juice there on the walking bait. So the gunfish. Yeah, we got we got all the right stuff. So I, when the, the first year the Vixen came out after I had wrecked them on Kentucky Lake. Um I went to Pickwick the next week for that golf car and in practice is bright blue bar, just a little bit of ripple. And I got on outside of a grass line and I chunked that Vixen out and I'm working it in four pounder. I'm like, 
And I looked down and it said 21 foot of water. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. But I was seeing bait blow up in the grass. You know, I'm just trying to figure something out. And dude, for like an hour, I took, after I caught that one, I took the hooks off. And for like an hour, I was going to buy like every fourth or fifth cast. Just nice. good. And guess what tournament happened? It was overcast. And then they didn't want to, you know, it was total opposite of what you would think. But I think the sun had all the bait and shad pushed into the grass. Right. And so all those bass were hanging off the edge until they, you know, got pushed up in a hole or on the outside. Uh, and with overcast, it kind of makes it difficult. Those fish can move around, you know, they've got a lot more shade and, and places mm -hmm. to go. Yeah, I know in the Gunnersville tournament, when they would get a little bit of wind and cloud, a lot of times they'd pull off and slow roll that chatterbait on those mm -hmm. grass. That they were that they were before punching and and, and frogging right, and then right. when it, I saw them make that adjustment quite a few times, so I think maybe a spinnerbait or a crankbait or a chatterbait in that instance maybe. Um, yeah, that uh, I learned a lot that 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 year I fished down there because it was totally different. You know, it fished very similar to Kentucky Lake, but it was like the conditions I would be throwing top water were like the opposite. And, but uh -huh. now that I've got older, more experience, I realize, man, sometimes in the fall, of the sun of your day, it's tougher to get a bite, but you can get some really big bites on top water. Yeah, and then the other, my other double stacker is like my catch-all. Like, this is the one, like, it's so big with two, like, this is what I will repack if I'm as a co. Right. Like, this is like, you can just, like, put, like, five or six square bills in there and a couple rail traps and a few top waters. And like, you can just load this thing up. Uh, this to me is an awesome co box. If you just need like one Plano box to get you through a tournament, you repack this, like this thing. I don't even know if they make these anymore, but like, dude, I bought mine at uh, this. I don't know what model number yours is. This is, says it's a, uh, 371345. I bought mine at Academy about a month ago, seven ninety nine. Seven ninety nine. Yeah, mine's a forty seven hundred too. So maybe they still do. So I mean, I still got the stickers on them. Like, oh, yours is a forty seven hundred. Yours is even bigger. Ooh. Oh, right. I think W had some. Um. Uh, yeah, Vic, I'm here. I'm just, uh, you know, low energy. I, I, I can't really be around anyone. Um, so I got to sleep by myself tonight. So I'm just hanging out in the bait room. So the World Series is on, evidently. Like, I just lost all concept of sports this year. <laughs> I, I, old school Braves fan. I'm not watching it. So, it, it, you know what? Uh, I'll say this. I had to get off topic. It doesn't really, you know, I'm a big college football fan, absolutely act stupid when it comes to the balls, but I've been watching other games and stuff. It just doesn't feel the same this year. Mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of it has to do with there's not a bunch of fans there. So you can right. hear the popped in crowd noises and see the – it's different, which – but it's it been a really good year for watching bass. Even, even watching the Vikes, like with the – no, it feels like we're watching – still watching preseason, even though I know it counts. Mm -hmm. like it's still like exhibition games like we're just playing for fun like it doesn't really matter right uh, 10 horse money says bait man what's your favorite five to six inch hollow body swim bait in the fall i'm always been a bass tricks uh guy um but uh <clears throat> yeah dude <laughs> six inch, five inch six inch bass tricks in uh Shad, uh, they made a color called Blue Gizzard that was really, really good. Uh, Hitch number one <laughs> is probably one of my all-time favorites. Um, I, I, I'm going to knock some stuff over, though. But, um, but uh, yeah, Fast Tricks, Scottsboro Tackle, and my man Brent Anderson would tell you the true bass. But my personal best ones have always has been Fast Tricks and Scottsboro. Way too much Mountain Dew, not enough beer being drank in this life. Man, I, I I don't drink anymore. Just personal choice. Uh, nothing wrong. Drink in his condition, it might put him under. Right. I, I'm trying to compensate for the the Rona energy by double dosing my Mountain Dew tonight. 
So, well, so Kevin Steven is in this bass club called the Prior Look Hook Setters, where I live. Yeah. And, uh, they're decent fishermen, but they always win the beer drinking championship every year at the state tournament. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It sounds like some of the guys I golf with or used to golf with. They're like, "Well, we we didn't shoot very well, but we drank two cases of beer." Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, nice. So, so we've talked. I'm trying to think. We want to make sure we don't forget that we talked swim baits, we've talked spinner baits, we talked flukes, hard baits. While you went to to go check on the kids, we talked about punching grass a little bit, which I've got that fully covered. Uh, I mean, there definitely could be a grass bite. Do you think there's any chance there's a frog bite? I don't know. I don't know. Like if we were on, if I, I was on guys, Gunner's Roll. I know some guys that throw a frog down there and, and they catch them. Uh, but I'm, I don't want to lead you down the wrong path or making you buy a bunch of daggum frogs and not use them. I just, that's, I think that's kind of one of them deals. The guys do it. They just don't talk about it. I mean, I don't need to buy any frogs. We're fully stocked on frogs. Yeah, you're really good on the frogs. I mean, way good. Yeah. Well, we got, I mean, got some. some yeah, there's on Max. Uh -oh. All right. I need to hurry up and plug in my laptop. <laughs> Hold tight. Make it? We still there? I'm still here. I picked some big G's tackle, big G's magic, and PTO's cool. I've never seen a big G's tackle, big G's magic. I'd love to see a photo of Michael Man send it to me on Instagram. A GTO, that's Gunnersville, right? Store. Great store, man. Uh, great store. We uh, I stayed there. Well, actually, uh, Gaffer and on here, he's been there too. We because we were there for an April divisional tournament on Gunnersville, and that was a couple miles down the road from us. So I was in there a bunch. So that's a sweet, sweet store. Yeah, dude. There's some, uh, and people don't know, they actually bought out Waterfront Tackle, um, which Waterfront's a great store. Uh, so. They're going to basically totally restock Waterfront with inventory from GTO. Of course, you'll still be able to buy breakfast and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. that, that's nice. You're going to get the same customer service and baits um, without having to drive in between. And then you got uh, in Scottsboro, you got my friends, uh, Tim, Tim Evans and his wife, Scottsboro Tackle. Really great uh, store. One of the yeah. nice cleanest tackle shops you'll ever go to very organized but it's kind of in downtown scottsboro total different <clears throat> set but um great store yeah. they get great stores there in gunnersville I, I i drove through scottsboro <clears throat> and launched there at the scottsboro ramp because isn't the scottsboro ramp in rosebud yeah whatever it is i didn't make it there i wish i would have um but did you say waterfront and gto are kind of combining that yeah. we said mm-hmm Nice. And then uh, I want to think there's a Gunnersville bait and tackle or something like that too, but it's it's right. somewhere else. It's not near as big as GTO. Right. Um, we cannot throw the A rig, Gabe. Um, uh, so Kevin asked, can you target smallies specifically on Pickwick, or they just mingle? I think you can definitely target smallies. Yeah. You may catch some. I mean, I don't think you can like. I think you try to say you're probably more likely to catch a big largely targeting smallies than you're going to catch a big smallie targeting largies. Does that make sense? Yeah, which would be the opposite here on Kentucky. Like a lot of times, you'll catch a big smallmouth or trying to catch a big largemouth. But like if you're trying to get below and 
and push the current brakes and stuff like that. You're trying to catch smallmouth. Right. I mean, period. But you'll run into a big large mouth that's just hanging with them. Whereas up here, you know, if I'm, you know, hopping a jig or throwing a big worm on a ledge here, I'm obviously trying to catch a large mouth. And sometimes you'll run into a big small mouth on accident. But uh, Pickwick's one of those places that's very area oriented as far as what kind of fish are there. Um, the the Wilson end of the Pickwick Florence has got the majority of population. You start getting up toward the Pickwick Dam um, area. It's going to have more of a mix of, of, of mostly largemouth. So, but you know, spots, right? There's decent spots too. I mean, you can catch three, four pound spot in that lake too. Yes, there's some big spots. Matter of fact, uh, it's public knowledge. You can uh, look on the video of me and my boy Jake Lawrence, who's a hammer on Pickwick. He caught about a three and a half, four pound spot in the summer. You know, that's, that was a, that's a good one. uh eric i am from kentucky western kentucky i live about five minutes from kentucky like it's really close to me i live on the north end though but uh, a diehard balls fan see my parents were born in tennessee um my dad went to ut so that's what happened he brainwashed me when i was young and i watched and, and they won a national championship kind of at the started my peak fandom when i was really into him so yeah eric's is so like near benton matter of fact i live in benton i'm looking at benton right now i live in the town of benton great call do you have my address by chance <laughs> eric does have a little bit of stalker to him don't mind that's him. okay that's okay up by moore's area yeah matter of fact i can take a cutoff road to moore's i used to live on moore's camp highway Nice. So, I'm gonna say Man, what, what, small world. So we talked a lot about baits. I guess uh, I don't know if there's anything uh, else to talk about Pickwick. Otherwise, if there's people who got random, I know like Sean was trying to sneak in a few random questions of the others that we might have missed. So if you guys want to re-ask any of those bait questions, sure. Uh, Let me be yeah. right back again. I'm sorry, Dad. Life is calling. That's all right. We'll definitely uh, get Kevin to answer this question, Gabe. But I know, I know Mark Menendez seems really high on the future of uh, Kentucky. It sounds like, and I know I've heard uh, Onum guy, I forget what his name is, Matt Robertson, say that he thinks it's just a couple years away from being fantastic again. And it seems like there's a lot of just under keeper size fish that probably next year are going to be keeper size fish. So I, I've heard that like things are looking to swing around pretty good on uh, Kentucky and Barkley. But we'll definitely get the uh, Sean. You're probably talking about the new, I think the, what is it? The launcher frog. I've heard mixed reviews. I heard some people say that it's really good. I've heard some people say it's just another junk pizza scum frog. Uh, I haven't tried them myself. I've been tempted to order them. I've heard, you know, like the videos that JT Kenny does and a few other people on social media that probably are being compensated to talk about them, say positive things about them. And then I talk to some other people that think they're junk, but I don't know if they've really given them a fair try. So I'm not really sure uh about those new launcher frogs if anybody else in the chat has used the launcher frogs has an opinion leave a con this let, let us know um and uh, i know uh bateman had a bunch of them i don't know if he's got a chance to fish them but i know they shipped him some and i know bateman jr's got some um so we can definitely get kevin to weigh in on those two things um otherwise this year i've been mostly throwing discontinued obsolete frogs in my box and catch a lot of bass on them. Let's see, so what is your pre-thought bait strategy for Pickwick? Um, for me, there's two things that I really want to explore, and one would be the grass bite. Uh, I definitely feel comfortable fishing, you know, whether it's the eelgrass or hydrill or milfoil. Exploring that bite, whether it's pitching, flipping, fishing the edges, fishing the current breaks, 
you know, shell beds around them or little points and things like that, I would feel really comfortable doing that. Um, the other thing would be, you know, fishing shoals, humps, current breaks with, you know, paddle tail swim baits and spinner baits, you know, that type of thing would be the two bites that I'm kind of most interested in going into it, but I'm trying to keep an open mind about the tournament uh, and not trying to get too dialed in and want to kind of, you know, not box myself in with preconceived notions. All right. Sorry about that. All right. So two people asked about your thoughts on the rebound of Kentucky Lake and potentially fishing the BFLs next year. So uh, I'm going to be real honest with you. I think Kentucky Lake is going to come back. It's not going to be instant from what I saw this spring. Uh, and you'll be able to see it on YouTube probably in about two weeks uh, on Mark Menendez's channel episode that airs we had a plethora of 13 to 14 inch bass and we've got this huge spawn of bait fish this year there's more uh bait fish than i've ever seen a lot of it's skipjack and um emerald shiners but there's actually been a resurgence of threadfin shad i think you're going to see a lot of fish growth um it's going to be better we still don't have um uh, what I would call um, uh, a lot of vegetation, you know, right. uh, there's no grass or anything like that. We would love to see that come back. If the grass would come back, I really think it would speed up the recovery process. All right. So what is it, a keeper on Kentucky's 14 or 15? 15 inch. Okay. So like if you're catching a bunch of 13 to 14s this year, you should start seeing a lot more limits next year. I think so. Uh, <laughs> there was a tournament a couple of weeks ago, and it took over two days. It was like 36 pounds to win or something like that. But my buddy, uh, Joey, on Facebook, he is absolutely hammered smallmouth today and yesterday. He had over 20 pounds of smallies today on swim bait. Well, that's the one thing. Like, the smallie population has always been kind of a, uh, a distant second, right? I mean, there's been right. good ones, but, uh, but it seems like the smally population has kind of held steady or slightly increased while the largemouth. Yeah, kind of I think it's gone up, man. Um, yeah. Zebra mussels clear the water. Um, the less grass, I think, actually helps the smallmouth. Um, they're a lot more aggressive feeder than a largemouth. And the first bass ever caught that had a baby Asian carp in its mouth was a smallmouth. Um, so, uh, I don't think they feel as threatened by the carp because they mm -hmm. tend to move around a lot more than a large right. Uh, and they'll get deeper. I think, I think they'll, they'll, they'll swim around and they'll find bait in that 30, 40 foot of water. Where's the large mouth here? They'll go shallower, you know, but, um, and they're not so much small mouth don't seem to be uh cover oriented i gotta be right. careful i think they're structure oriented fish but they're not you can catch a few out of a brush pile but they don't live around it they, they right. don't tend to just hang around that stuff now from what i know that they, they seem to like stumps here a lot but right so you you got we better get to sean's question he's been asking about those scum frogs they're a yeah. great frog and they've been around forever um and i was really excited to see Lynn, uh my boy Lee Livesey tear him up on that thing. Now, I don't know. I saw some close-up screenshots. <laughs> it didn't look exactly like a scum frog. So, oh yeah. Well, um, you know, I might have to call Lee and say, Lee, what's up with that, buddy? They didn't. They didn't look like they had the red hooks that a lot of them have. Um, but they do have. I mean, I feel like the the points of those are a little more exposed, right? Like they're yeah i have a they, they got so many different models of scum frog you know what i mean because i was trying to look and see you know there's like a big one there's the launch frog there's the, the tournament series um right. there's all kinds of other scum frogs that a lot of people have never heard of and i've never even seen i mean it's a sure. huge deal so um i don't i don't know exactly which one he was throwing sure a lot of people do love scum frogs and they have absolutely caught fish so 
On a side note, does do you know Lance Freeman? Unfortunately, I do. <laughs> How do you really feel? <laughs> no, Lance is a good kid, man. Uh, I'm still butthurt. I took him fishing when he was like 14. He absolutely smoked me, and I was just like, yeah, I ain't taking him no more. All right. So Sean's asking about my pre-tournament prep process. So, yeah, it's kind of a, a slow burn for me. I mean, I, I knew I qualified for this tournament back in mid-August. So I've been doing a little bit of reading, been watching some YouTube videos, kind of just getting a general feel for what I think is going to happen down there, spending some time on Navionics web app, spending some time looking at my Lake Master chips and my boat. Um, talk to my buddy who fished the championship in 2017, kind of got his feel for what was going on. Um, yeah, just a lot of different things. Uh, doing a little bit of Google Earth, <laughs> looking at some of that stuff. Uh, I'm the kind of guy that likes to do a little bit of that, you know, I got a little of that John Cox flair to me. I don't mind looking for that off the wall stuff a little bit, kind of sneaky stuff. I don't mind uh, wasting an hour idling back into a creek to see if something's there uh, in practice. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at uh, on that for this tournament, uh, especially for a bigger tournament like this on a, on a, on a southern impoundment. Um, I've got probably two or three areas that I really plan to focus on for the tournament that I've kind of like because I, I don't know, Pickwick's, I don't know how many miles long, 40 miles long, something yeah, like that. It's actually about half the size of Kentucky Lake, believe it or not. Right. Maybe actually it's more like a third. Yeah. Is uh, I can I ran to Florence big, to uh, the back of Yellow Creek and it was only like 45 minutes. Yeah, that gets so me wanna, from Kentucky Dam. Lake, but I also don't want to stretch myself too thin running dam to dam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. stuff. I won't do that. I'm not the guy that's fishing for a shot at the Elite Series or Bassmaster Classic. You are. You're a lot better fisherman than me. I just tell you. I just tell you all about the baits. You know. I should be a professional bass fisherman shopper. Is what I should be. You know how these women go out and shop for other women to dress. Like someone should hire me and say, "Hey, you you got to go with me to this Elite event, and you go in the tackle shops for me." Well, maybe that's the, so. Like. My wife does this stitch fix box, right? Yeah. And uh, the whole theory behind a stitch fix, it's kind of like a, it's like a monster box to some degree, but it's a little different. Like you supposedly get hooked up with a, a stylist at stitch mm -hmm. fix. You could be a, a bait stylist. Uh, and so the way they you like, you kind of give them you, like you go through and you like click on things you like. And, but for you, it'd be like, this is the type of fisher I'm in. This is, where I fish, this is, uh, right. Like, uh, you know, this is where I fish. This is how I like to fish. This is the type of fishing I do. I'm a club guy. I'm a tournament guy. I'm a, uh, right. And then you could come back and like customize their weekly, their monthly box, their stitch fix, like their, their bait fix, bait fix. I like it. Are you writing this down? Yeah. Uh, I'm taking notes, bud. I'm always looking a way to take over the bait world. One idea at a time. Most of them I never follow up on. But you know, I was, uh, you know, I, was, I didn't want to talk over, so I was responding to a little bit of the chat messages. What's up, Paula? Good to see you. Yes, like a bait consultant, uh, a designer bait consultant, the bait advisor. Yeah, I like that. You know, to be honest. Uh, I've got all this crazy stuff here and so do you rich and all that, but really when it comes to Derby day time, we need about a 10th of that. And yeah. one thing you'll notice in all the, a lot of the pros in the event, <laughs> they keep it really simple. Yeah. My jig box is like 70% of what I throw. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end of the day we have our strengths and I think, uh, Lee Livesey showed you his strength is he's a power fisherman. He's a great frog fisherman. He's a good swim bait fisherman. I don't know what else he threw the week, but he did all most of his damage doing what he does best and throw a frog. Yeah, I don't know what his total catch was, 
but it had to be pretty close to, I don't know, what of his 20 fish. Guessing at least 15 came on a frog last week. And he stuck with it, man. You know, it's very easy for me to go abandon a frog bite because if I'm not getting bit, I tend to get start doing other things. Um, and he stuck with it. And that's, uh, I think that's a key at any level of fishing, whether it's uh, up north where you fish or where I fish or in Florida, you got to fish your strengths, even on new water sometimes. And it pays off. Um, I'm not a guy, if I had to go fish a tournament where I'm throwing Cinco's all day, I'm going to be near the bottom, you know, if I try to fish like that. I would much rather, you know, fish my way. Um, and, then, but, and But those guys adjust, you know. You, you also can't put a round, uh, or round peg in a square hole. You know, you can't force feed them a swim bait if they're just not biting it either, but... So you, you can do that for six cents. They could, uh, somebody gives you a budget and they, they fill out a little report card on themselves. And then you just, you go, you do personal shopping, uh, at the six cents and ship it to their door every month. Dude, I, I can do that on tackle warehouse. <laughs> the problem is I tend to go crazy and it takes me five hours to fit in a $50 budget, but. That would be my five hours, not their five hours. So that's where it will work out, I guess. Uh, so how do you pick your favorite colors for baits? Uh, like unique colors are black, blue, green, pumpkin, shad. Well, bait man, the first thing he does is grab something purple. <laughs> Number one, that is the most important. It's got to have some purple in it. Uh, for me, it for jigs and soft plastics and that kind of stuff, uh, it typically for me is some version of green pumpkin, or black and blue. Uh, and I tend to throw a lot of that tramp stamp type color where it's like yeah. half blue, half green pumpkin. Like if I don't, if there's any color to the water at all and I've never been there before, I'm gonna pick up that tramp stamp and there's a few other colors that other companies have for it, right? But that black, blue, green pumpkin laminate, I feel like you can't go wrong to start out. Um, and then I adjust, right? If, if the water gets a little darker, I get a little you know louder, darker colors. If it's cleaner, I go more green pumpkin more watermelon, right? And that's where most of my, we don't throw a ton of like that plum June bug stuff up here. Mm -hmm. not work. It just doesn't, it's not super popular where I know where down you live in the summertime, those plums, those reds, those June bugs get a lot more popular. Yeah. Uh, you know, as many crazy crankbaits and swim bait colors and jerk baits and lipless I carry and I throw and I've had success on when it comes to soft plastics and jigs, uh, Rich, I keep it pretty daggum simple. My favorite color on Pickwick, Kentucky Lake in a jig is a green pumpkin with chartreuse in it. It, it, it just works. I catch them on it from mid spring all the way up into the fall. Green pumpkin trailer on or a green pumpkin chartreuse. If the, I like the chartreuse on the trailer when the water's got a little bit more color. Um, but you know, you look at my plastics other than big worms, it's um pretty simple man green pumpkins and you hit the head that tramp stamp uh whatever you want to call it payback or it can even be a green pumpkin june bug same kind of deal yeah a green pumpkin base is where i always start um and then black and blue and then in the fall is when i really start throwing a lot of watermelon seed some more that's got some more transparency i like a watermelon blue flake i've done really good on that in the fall watermelon candy and then if i'm fishing deep in 12 15 foot it's some kind of plum it's a plum blue flake or plum crazy plum blue flake they're all of a plum base um it's really simple i don't have a lot of off the wall you know, worm colors. I got a few uh, different ones, but green pumpkin blue is a really good pickwick color. For some reason, they eat it there. But again, sure. it's a green pumpkin base. It's got a little different flash in it. That's all. Yeah. So for me, like one of my favorite colors I throw a lot of is this green pumpkin black brown, right? So yeah. Yeah. That's a really good one. That's a little bit of black and a little bit of brown. And then with a jig, what I just so like if it's clear water, I got like this watermelon meta scrub right if it starts yep. to get darker i go green pumpkin blue or 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 something like that right and then if it gets even more stained then i go to like a black blue trailer or a tramp stamp trailer right and then yep. 
if it gets, you know, so a lot of times with a jig, you can start with a base color that you like, and then you can go lighter, darker with your trailer and adjust. Um, yeah, 1099 is another one. Otherwise, this Oki Craw, which is a black, blue, green pumpkin, is another that's, base jig that's that I love. That's a great color, man. Uh, I, you know, I get, you know, I'm sure you get this question a like, lot. When do you match your jig trailer to your jig? Sometimes I have better luck. You know, like you've got that Okeechobee craw, craw colors putting like a sapphire yeah. blue on it. I'm not sure they're keying in on the blue, but it's that contrast. They like that contrast, you know, especially yeah, if the water is a little color. Most of my, I don't usually throw a straight green pumpkin. It's just, I know a lot of people like straight green pumpkin and catch the mm -hmm. fire from them, but I like <clears throat> multiple colors. Yeah. And <clears throat> typically my trailer is going to match one of the strands, right? Or one of the shades, but it's mm -hmm. never like a solid silhouette of all green pumpkin or a solid silhouette of all black blue, right? It's going to mm -hmm. be, <clears throat> and then I adjust. Um, um, but to answer Sean's questions, picking them out, man, um, I really go by time of the year. Um, no, a jig, man, it's a green, it's a green pumpkin base, basically. From, you know, the only time I don't throw a, something that's got green pumpkin or black and blue is a swim jig where I tend to like some white and blue yolk. We didn't really talk about lipless baits. No, and, and to be honest, I don't, um, it's, it's hard for me to get away from a regular old rattle trap. You were that's talking it, about the driver, yeah? Eight years old, PB, eight six on that thing right there. Lake Fork special. That is RT, I believe it's 131. This used to, I, my original PB came on this. I'm Dude, like, that color freaking smashes, man. It ain't on different regular chrome and blue, but it feels cool because it's not yeah. blue. It's turquoise. It's so got red line in the front of it. And let's go. <laughs> I actually caught it off the bank there uh, at Moore's Resort for, for your buddy Eric. I was asking about the Moors. I caught it off the bank when I was eight. That kind of depends on what the grass is doing. Like, if mm -hmm. some water's up, and there's a little water above that grass, I think, the, you know, <clears throat> that lipless could play. Oh, I do. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you got any bull shads, but it's a. They, they eat that burn. That is one thing that I thought about toying around. I've got some big swim baits and things like that, like glide baits and things like that, but I don't have like bull shads. Well, if you got a Strike King wake shad or a six cent speed wake, uh, a wake bait's a really nasty deal there. I really don't have a lot of that type of stuff, which I don't know if this is when I want to add that distraction into my life. <laughs> I'll probably wait till after the tournament. You know, yeah. you can always experiment later. Go, going into tournaments trying to learn baits is, a, is not a good deal. I've found that out from experience. I do have uh, come on. this like five inch true tungsten and sexy shad. Right. Yeah, just take the balls out. Just take the balls and then it's a floater. My wife did that a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, you've seen what's happened to me twice already tonight. Otherwise, I got some of these old school Seville swimmers. Mm. You know what's weird though? I feel that bait only works really good on herring lakes. Like, yeah. I've thrown it here and I threw it at a couple power plant lakes in Illinois and not got a sniff. But, but guys, Hartwell and Lanier swear by it. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I'd be like, I know the big swim baits could play down there, but I just don't know that that's <clears throat> this is the time of the tournament to be playing around with that. <clears throat> no, we gotta get you qualified for was, is it Bassmaster Classic or a bid for the Elite Series? I, I'm more concerned about the Classic, to be honest. Yeah. In Nick, Texas, a big Dream Smasher or Ooh, something. Oh yeah, yeah. I like those dream smashers, man. Talon, top hook. I got one up there. Mine's all faded. Gotta be careful on them dudes, man. That the yeah. lead has that reaction. Oh, 
I mean, I've got some, like, if I happen to find myself sitting on a sack and I need to play around some swim baits, I got enough to goof around with, but I don't know that that's going to be a... Right. Yeah. I mean, if you got 20 pounds, what's it going to hurt you to throw around an Osprey for four or five hours, try to catch a six, seven pounder? I mean, that's how I would approach that deal. Can't. Shadow bass, and I can't throw a rattle bait, zero fish. <clears throat> yeah. I think you were talking about this on your stream. <sighs> It's weird because like some, I mean, to me, it's one of the fishiest catching, like and up where I live, like pike, walleye, bass, like it just gets bit by a lot of things. I got guys here that throw a little, they actually make an eight ounce rattle trap that guys crush crappie on. They troll them for crappie. <clears throat> and to me, where I live, it's... It's really about the grass and the and the uh, lipless crankbaits. I throw them around grass flats. <clears throat> um, right. I know down south you throw them in other places more, but uh, to me it's it's for ripping through the grass. Um, but the other time that I've done well on it when I've been down south is on super shallow flats, <clears throat> the river, you know just finding those little stumps and little mud flats and where they're pushing bait and just throwing it in like one to two feet of water. And I've, I've had that luck on the Mississippi river as well. Yeah. Um, I've actually caught them on the regular Tennessee river below the dam on a red eye shad, um, in the summer. You know, Mark caught them on, you know, the show I filmed with Mark he is basically this time last year, burning it right next to the bank. Um, <laughs> It, his was a red eye shad and um, that pineapple smash bright chartreuse color man overcast day uh, nice. but for some reason they work really good on a river system i don't know if it's uh you know there's a lot of bait down on those rivers and stuff but the bass aren't used to seeing those things being burned above their head and they react to it yeah so, uh, i bet you've got a big old box of diamond shad somewhere in his boat that he breaks dude my that place I went to in Illinois, Mike's Tackle World, I didn't get on video, has the biggest selection of old school diamond sheds I've ever seen. I need to go back there and load up before everybody buys them out, but that is a great lipless. They made two versions. Uh, a lot of people don't know. They made a smooth side a diamond shed. <laughs> oh, it's... Randy wants to know: Are Norman crankbaits boss? And no, sir, they are. Uh, they're plastic. They did actually. They did make a wooden bait uh, one time. I forgot the name of it. Maybe it was called a Top Dollar or something like that. Nice. Well, cool. I don't know. Well, uh, so we've been almost two hours, and uh, Bateman's a little under the weather, so we'll maybe give it a few more minutes if there's more questions. But I think. We covered, I learned some nuggets. I've got a few ideas and things I want to add in my cart. Uh, a couple nuggets. I got some sneaky colors for some Strike King and a couple of good other ideas. Uh, so, mission. Yeah, you got to probably put some of those new Guggen baits in there. <laughs> I, uh, I don't own any Guggen baits. Uh, I don't think I own a single. Man, I. I'm not complaining. I enjoy it when people tag me and stuff from Instagram and whatnot. I always try to respond, you know. But man, I've been getting tagged in a lot of giveaways, and they all got like Guggen baits in them. And I'm like, man, you know, I, if I win, I don't know what I'll just have to give them away. But nothing against them, man. I've just got yeah. it's kind of, you know, there's certain stuff that you're used to using, and you know, nothing wrong with the Guggen baits and all that. But um, it's not my cup of tea. Well, I guess you're, they're killing it, right? They don't need my help, right? Like, right. <laughs> so I was you know, told, and you, you tell me if you believe this or not, because I found it really hard to believe. I was told by someone that attended a wholesaler show two weeks ago, a very big wholesaler, and Zoom wasn't there. And this wholesaler is the biggest wholesaler Zoom in the country. And they said, well, believe it or not, Guggen Bates has outsold Zoom three to one. And I said, I thought, man, they got to be making a hard Guggen sales pitch because Zoom has so many SKUs and is in everywhere. It's really hard for me to believe that Guggen is outselling Zoom. 
I mean, I could see it. Yeah. Like if you told me Guggen was out selling Zoom at Dick's Sporting Goods, I'd say I'd believe that. That's very believable. I could. You know what I mean? Like, that. <clears throat> but yeah, so like I said, like, hey, Strike King, which a lot of the baits in the Guggen soft plastic are very similar, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So those baits were around before. Those are baits that have been in my boat. Those are baits that I'm comfortable using. So I, I don't I have no need to go grab a Bandito bug. I'll keep throwing my structure bugs, right? My right. range. Right. So, um, so yeah, like I, I'm not bashing them, but like they they've done their thing, and uh, like that's just not where I'm going to spend my money. <laughs> but I, I'll, I'll give them this: that they did come out with a good deal. I like the 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 rattling Ned where they put the rattle in there. Nobody had done that. That was their own yeah. thing. So uh, kudos to them. They did something no one else did, and it is a, it's a good concept. Now, to me, I'll just share a worm rattle uh, in whatever. Right. And then it's hard to do that in the last tag, but you can do it in a, a, a missile, you know, Ned Bomb or whatever you want to do. So The Booyah remake in the Excalibur. So, I mean, it's the same company. They're just rebringing it out under the Booyah. Uh, yeah, correct. Did you test on those one time? or Yeah, I have uh, – I got them in a box up here, but Let, here's I think the deal. It, works. it works for Pradco and I can't tell any difference. People at Pradco tell me there's no difference in the mold. However, I do feel like there is a weight difference. And I think that's the biggest difference is they changed. The originals were like half and three quarters. And the other ones are, are now five eighths and something else. Or I might have it backwards. Right. I would love to just, Take a Dremel and cut one in half just to see if there is actually a real. The problem is you don't want to cut one of your old Excaliburs in half. I've got one that it's seen better days that I could probably do to it. But I think that in your lip, like if you go back and search your lipless stream from like a month or so ago, you kind of like break it down, don't you? I think. Yeah, you know, I did a lipless stream like last week. I didn't get that in depth. Um. I will say I like the uh, the the booyah. They got that. Uh, oh yeah, I got that one, buddy. Um, and mine is the Excalibur. Um, they got the the, the hard knock, yeah. more of a rattle. That's the old one. Yeah, man. I got a couple. I tell you what, they did do though. They didn't get all the colors right. So that I have a feeling of different factories making them, and that can change things quite a bit. It can still be the same internal design, but the new factory may be using a different plastic or different type of weight. But yeah, here's the other two I got. Dude, that uh, the one with the blue back is pretty deadly. Yeah, this Oxbow, is, I think, is what they call that. Favorite green bay color in Minnesota is. Anything looks like a parrot. Well, that's Tennessee River right there, bud. It fits in the summer. Any variation of parrot, chartreuse blue, chartreuse purple, it just catches. Um, Nate, I have seen those Instagram pics of what looks like a vibrating jig. <clears throat> it looks no. like a workaround, but I have no idea whether it would work or how it would work. But I'm going to have to look this up. Where would it be? Uh, see, I think it was in John B's story, and then people have screenshotted it and reposted it. I don't know where it would be. Um. Mm. Well, they got a swim bait coming out, a hard bait. I saw that in John B's video. I, I, look, I don't hate the Google Squad. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I actually enjoy John B's uh, content, like we went kayaking down the Devil's River. It was really good. I, I like that kind of stuff. Um, so, uh, and he's a nice guy. I've met him two, three times now, and he's always seemed to be pretty level-headed. Decent guy. To me. Knew who I was. Oh, well, you can see this, but it's like a straight wire, and then there's like some kind, and there's three beads between the blade and the. Hmm, I don't know about it. It's interesting. I'm not quite sure how, but if there's a lot of hardware up there on the front end, which I'm guessing helps them get around what they need to get around to make it. Right. 
And it's got the Guggen eye on it, so. That is uh, interesting. But with it like that, is that blade, that blade's not going to be hitting anything like a jackhammer. It's almost going to be almost yeah. like a scrounger deal going back and forth. Exactly. And it's, not, it's not free pivoting. Because it's a fixed wire, like a spinner bait. It's almost like they put the <clears throat> blade on the arm end of a, a short arm spinner bait. Right. Um, I could see that working. I could also see it being massively terrible. But I'm just because it says Guggen, I'm not going to just throw it under the bus. You know what I mean? I, I'm willing to give anything a whirl in an honest opinion about it. They may have figured out something uh, cool, uh, you know. But, uh, you know, at least they're trying to go out of the way to make something different this time. You know what I mean? Everybody's just itching for the day that Patton goes out on, on Z-Man, you know. So it says Lunkers TV has it in a video. Um, <clears throat> it was in Rob's last video. Lunkers. I, just, I don't I don't watch Lunkers. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, that would explain why I haven't seen it. Uh, it's Last few I've seen shooting guns or reacting to war videos, and you know, I I didn't I don't mind watching their stuff, you know, but uh, I'm not into that stuff. It says they're calling it the clickbait. <clears throat> that is, I'm not gonna lie, it's probably a good name for it. <laughs> I'll give credit where it's due. That's a good name. Don't don't get Kevin all fired up, Sean. Not the time. No, I'm I'm good. I'm trying I'm trying to, you know really uh tone it down a notch for a while um yeah we're trying to get him, we don't need his blood pressure going high when he's trying to fight off a, a virus so right uh, but man it's true though every time i start talking about him on my streams all of a sudden people start joining in it's that it, it's, youtube listens to you i'm telling you it's not working tonight we're holding steady <laughs> okay you know what? We got faithful people on here, and I appreciate well, it. Well, it's been good. It's been uh, solid, rock solid tonight. So, uh, is the jackhammer worth the price? Um, yes and no. It's a darn damn good chatterbait, but I also think the the Z-Man Custom. That's a really good one. Like, so if let me I just want to throw a jackhammer. Uh, I would throw the Z-Man Custom all the time. That's a yeah, really good. One. Like, let me just bring this one up. Like this is a bait that I throw about half and half. And it's I think six ninety nine at uh, TW. And I think you get I don't know eighty to ninety eighty percent of the jackhammer for a third of the cost. How's that? That's a very good. That's a that's a good statement to make there. And you can get it with a four out or a five out hook. So depending on, you know, mm -hmm. what size fish you're fishing, your cover, how heavy a rod line you like to fish. Um, they got a bunch of good colors. It comes with the black nickel hook. It's still got the hook keeper on it. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Like it's got just about everything you'd want. Yeah. There's the hook keeper. It's got a black nickel hook. It's got. Way better hardware than the original um, without maybe all the frills you don't 100% need on the jackhammer. But that's my uh, two cents. So do I throw the jackhammer? Quite a bit. But I also throw the, the custom a lot. I do. I don't think it's um, – the price is bad. But I do tend to agree with some people when they say it's overpriced because at the end of the day it is just a bladed jig. But – According to Z-Man, they've told me they make less on the jackhammer than any other product or any other skew in their product line. And they said it's basically because we have to import it. We have to pay uh, two sets of royalties because uh, actually it's an evergreen bait and they right. have to license it to Z-Man. So they're, they're paying that royalty um, and they got to import it and that hook is expensive um so i mean you look at a pack of those gamakatsu flipping hooks you only get three or four in a pack and they're like six bucks so you think okay they're putting that hook in a bladed jig and um tantine skirt which i don't really 
the one thing the hand tie does though is if you're skipping it or anything it holds up yeah. but um i've catch a lot of fish on it but um picasso makes a pretty good bladed jig too oh uh -huh. and the strike king thunder cricket um the only problem about thunder cricket man I, i've seen them in packages where skirts are falling off already and stuff and uh i i don't think it's a 12 dollar um bait either i think it's about a seven eight dollar bladed jig uh just to be honest they got to pay, they gotta pay a buck or two to to z man so they yep. then, so the people don't realize this when you're in the bait game every time you put like a quarter into your bait it ends up being a dollar on retail yes so when you pay a dollar royalty that actually is going to be two dollars in retail price because yes after you gotta mark it up at your least margin, you gotta get your margin and tack where else gets their margin it like doubles and triples that right i mean you so you got to pay xyz company a dollar you know striking did it the right way they contacted z-man they got their blessings they worked together on the 3x plastic z-man said sure we want you to change it up just a little bit so they've got the movable eye which is cool uh i actually think it makes it hang up less because that it, it pivots the bait a little bit um but so let's say they had to pay a dollar for that well they're negative a dollar so they got to mark it up two dollars just one dollar right. to get back to even one dollar to make some profit right and then when they got to sell that to tw or dicks or whatnot then yeah so that, that's that's where those numbers come from and, and that 40 percent gets locked on top of that so it all <clears throat> magnified so no the u.s jackhammers are not tungsten correct i had i got really upset i you know here i go on my horse i saw a wired to fish video on the guys going through all the the yeah. uh bladed jigs and he said and the jack camera's so good it's all made of tungsten and makes a different sound and i'm like pounding the keys yo bro jack camera is not a tungsten bait and the guy yeah. comes well it's part tungsten. i'm like no it's not even part tungsten there's one in japan but supposedly the tungsten version will come to the u.s it's almost more like a finesse version it's it's, it's not just you know, so that's for the tungsten. 22 dollar jack hammer that's going to be awesome <laughs> mm -hmm uh brock green pumpkin flukes uh i used to throw them a lot like i used to throw a lot of weightless flukes and fish them much how most people would fish a texas rig weightless senko it's a good bait gets caught I used to throw it a lot on a carolina rig on a mojo rig uh a mojo rigged fluke is deadly in minnesota in the weeds so um you know what i want uh i learned from mr menendez and i actually have a video of me catching a few uh somewhere on this um laptop i need to post it on TikTok. you know on those 30 second fish catches a caffeine shed weightless fishing like a cinco just mm -hmm. it's got all that salt in it and those little ribs and it's got a little <clears throat> bit of shimmy oh man I've, I've learned that from mark it slays like you can go mark was throwing an ocho or whatnot and he'd come back weightless caffeine shed and crush yep. yeah and uh another one i used to throw was the lake fork fluke yeah one. that one was good good one i uh, love some soft dirt bait fishermen fishing too man and custom tanner baits for seven bucks you get 80 percent of the, the the jackhammer for a third of the price is my stance on that <laughs> uh saw our spool and applying our reel yeah so yeah dude that's that's no joke i've only been offshore twice and they've got more money in their line than i have in my baits it's crazy hmm. like it, it's that, that pink andy line that was like rope <laughs> cool all right i gotta get a new chair rich you got I think we covered what chair it. you're talking with over there you gotta you got something that's nice and comfortable. I've got these kitchen table chairs. I got to get me something new. I'm sitting on the deck of my boat. I'm sitting on my rod locker. Oh my gosh. Oh, camera. Yeah, I just sit, I just, my boat, I'm sitting in the bass cat. I'm sitting on a rod locker. I got my uh, little tackle box stack for my mouse here. And I got my wireless keyboard sitting on my lap. That's the set, that's the, the smoke and mirrors behind the setup. <clears throat> you absolutely rock man and i took all my tackle boxes out from the rod locker 
that the laptop's sitting on. So if we got into debate questions, I'd be able to get the planos out without moving the laptop. Always thinking ahead, man. When you got the bait man on, you never know what baits we're going to be talking about. So I tried to keep it pretty simple tonight, to be honest with you. It's a it's eleven o'clock. Yeah, I think we wrap it up. We had a great stream. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, pump that vitamin C. Take care of yourself. Hydrate. And uh, I think, well, just people know, I think you said you're going to try to stream a whole bunch, right? And yeah, uh, I'm going to try to. So basically, doctor said quarantine, but you're the he, he evidently knew who I was, which is whatever. And uh, he <laughs> said, listen, you can do streaming stuff. Uh, you know, they can't say nothing to you about work, you know, which is fine. He said, you can, I recommend if you have to get out of the house, go fishing. And I said, that works. So I may actually try to do some bank fishing, go explore some ponds or something like that, just to get something going on. You know what I mean? But I am going to try to stream uh, about every night. If I don't stream, I'll be uploading a video. So, so check out uh what is it the the bait man bait man know. tv i'm probably going to change the name of the channel it's still going to be bait man i just want that i need to get the tv off of it sure so it's bait man tv on youtube what is it Baxter? back to the bait man on instagram that's probably what i'm going to change it to that way everything matches you know right so i'm saying you follow those you'll see the notifications I have links to the description down below in both the Facebook and the YouTube streams. If you don't already follow the bait man, uh, appreciate you guys for hanging in here. Special shout out to Sean, uh, for the, uh, the uh, super chat tonight. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. just for at all because he's obsessed. We'll give him a little bit of the, the OG visor before we call it a night. That's right. Oh my God. Future night, we're gonna probably make this one into a visor. It's so. good looking in a little hat. Yeah, this doesn't fit. So this is my problem. I'll show you. Like this Omni hat actually fits my head pretty good, but this thing rides a little uh, high. That's just I'm picky on hats, man. I'm really picky on hats. I get those ones that stick up like the old uh Bill Dance red man hats. I'm like, man, my I dad loves it more. It'll the taller the hat is, yeah. the more my nice. dad wants to wear it. I'm going to pressure Epic Eric and I'm going to catch him on an off night when he's not going with Travis and I'm going to get him on the stream. Um, and actually, if you saw, Eric posted he caught a fish on that Junebug crankbait this week. Yes, he did. Can I make Bateman a six cents visor? I could, but I can't afford the sunscreen he would need to wear it. Dude, it's. Uh... Get a little thin back here. My visor days may be over, but you know, Billy McDonald's bald head, he wears a visor quite a bit. There you go. Um, yeah. So other other news. Uh I've been talking with Mr. Gary Dobbins about having him on the stream. So that might be mm. happening. Uh, I will say I got a YouTube comment and I shouldn't bring this up. Basically saying that all Dobbins rods owners think their stuff doesn't stink and no one else's rods is good and basically said the same thing about six cents that <laughs> and not it, it's uh i don't i don't feel it's like that rich i feel like me and you're very um even though we have our preferences we do like to tell it how it is you know if there's something that you know whether we're sponsored by or not if there's a better option out there or other options that are equally as good we definitely talk about it too so and honestly, I don't talk about other rods because I haven't used any of, like, I have not used the favorite rod. I have not yeah. used the Daiwa in, like, I mean, I've got lots of Daiwa reels and Shimano reels, but I haven't fished an SLX rod. I haven't fished a cocky <laughs> rod. I haven't, like, I'll just say I don't know. I'll tell you what I do like about my rods and mm -hmm. why rods I use. I won't give a, an opinion on a rod I haven't used. I can and tell I you consider that a much honest and better answer than just trying to make up something to save face and make someone happy. You know, yeah. I, I've had many questions about many rods and reels and just said, man, I've never used them. I'm sure yeah. they're good, but I can't give you an honest opinion about it. Yeah. And to me, rods are a lot like, I don't know, like shoes or cars or like, I mean, 
Ford makes a good truck, Dodge makes a good truck, Chevy makes, but there's certain things that are your personal preference that fit mm-hmm. the way you fish. They fit the way you, you know, like some people like faster action rods. Some people like more moderate. Some people like mm-hmm. rods with tips. Somebody just want all back. Like, it's just, you need to match it how you fish. Like if you're a guy that, you know, fishes a certain way with all power techniques and you're all braid 65 pound versus, I mean, it's just different needs for different anglers for sure. Some right. people barely set the hook. They just kind of reel into them. Now people like slam it home, right? Like their mechanics are different. Their style is different. What they want from a rod is different. So, um, so. Got to show, I got to show the viewers this. Got this in the mail. I showed Rich. Just added to my DT flat connect. Uh, this is the crawled echo. This is one of the hardest ones to get. If y'all find these on eBay, snatch them up before me. That's all I got to say. <laughs> nice. Cool. All right. Well, we'll do all it again. Right. Uh, make sure you check out the Bateman channel. Uh, if you're new here and for some reason you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that button. Uh, yeah. Until next time, uh, here to help you catch more bass and suck less. <laughs>